This is a review of Pilot's new pen, the Custom Heritage SE. Throughout the review, I'll show the pen in different kinds of light and angles. The pen comes in five different colorways, green, blue, black, red, and orange. This is the blue one. I had really debated over the orange because it was eye popping, but yeah, I always feel safe to blue. If you check the pilot page, they tell you that the SE stands for Seul, the French word for the only. And I think it's a kind of reference to being unique. They go on to say that no two pens are alike because of this resin swirly look. This pen is not a limited edition and should be part of their normal lineup. See why Jacob and I discuss this pen on their podcast, Tokyo Inklings, and Jacob says that this pen is the old Legance that Pilot discontinued in 2018. It now has this souped up resin body. As far as I can tell, this is Pilot's first sparkly pen. It sports a Pilot size 5 nib in 14 karat gold and rhodium trim. It's approximately the same size and shape as the Pilot Custom Heritage 92. It's just that it's a cartridge converter pen instead of a piston. It comes in Pilot's standard box and inside is Pilot's standard plastic box. You get the paperwork, a cartridge, and then the CON70 converter. Starting from the top, the finial is black with a bevel around its edge. The rhodium colored clip is a sword shaped clip with the word pilot printed on it. It gets slender and then flares out and comes to a point. It also has beveled edges. It's not a straight edge and that's a little bit different from a lot of the pilots. The cap band is rhodium trimmed and it comes down all the way to the end of the cap. It says custom heritage around the cap band on a little bit raised portion of the cap band. And then Japan is printed on the back side of it. There are three rhodium trim rings around the end of the finial, the section, and end cap. It opens in about one and a quarter turns. The section is fairly short and you will more than likely run into the threads as you hold the pen, but there is no significant step up. However, these threads are very smooth and almost feel soft. Under the loop, the threads didn't seem like they were very deep and they seem rounded, very smooth and not a problem at all. Sorry, I couldn't figure out how to show it on camera. The nib sizes are only fine and medium, and it's the Pilot size 5 nib with their plastic feet. So the section, the end cap, and the finial are black, and the rest of the body is this mixed swirly blue and black sparkly resin. And as I said earlier, this comes with a CON70 which runs a little bit less than $12 if you were to buy it separately. I really don't understand pen companies. I just got through buying a $500 pen for a friend and it didn't come with a converter, so I'm not sure why this came with a CON70. The Custom Heritage 912 is a little bit longer, a little bit girthier, and has about the same finial. The clips are about the same length, but I really like the SE's clip better because it's beveled. The 912 has a double cap band, and it doesn't go all the way to the end of the cap like it does on the SE. The end cap is longer but thinner on the SE. The 912 has the same length section, but it's a little bit girthier than the SE. And you have the same thing with the threads, and there's no step up. The SE is closest in size and shape to the Pilot Custom Heritage 92. Again, the clip gets narrower in the middle, comes to a point, and is beveled, so I like it better. The 92's cap band doesn't go to the end. On the 92, you can see the inner cap stops right here. So when you screw the pen back in, this section butts up against that cap and it seals the pen. 
I looked inside the cap of the SE and it looks like the inner cap goes all the way up to the edge, all the way to the edge of the cap ring. You can see a thin plastic ring around the inside there. This will be significant later. The 92 in the SE section is approximately the same. And they both have the same Pilot size 5 nib and both only come in fine and medium nib widths. I want to compare the SE to Sailor's Pro Gear Slim Amaoto Harusame. The Harusame is new and it is exactly the same price point as the SE. The Harusame, I believe, is going to be available, if not already, in the US. I got the Harusame because of its matte finish and its unusual coloring. The SE is longer and just slightly girthier. And like the SE, the Harusame has a metal cap band that goes to the end of the cap. They both have approximately the same size nib, except for in the Harusame, it's a 21 karat nib, even though it's in a Pro Gear Slim. I, I can't keep up with Sailor's nib choices, but the Harusame only comes in a fine medium, and then the SE comes in either a fine or a medium. If you look inside the Harusame's cap, it's the same thing, the inner cap goes all the way up, but it goes just short of the cap band on the inside, you can see it. Whereas with the SE, the inner cap goes all the way to the end. The Harusame didn't come with a converter, and because I wanted to have a white knob with gold trim on my converter, I had to buy two and then change out the knobs so that I would have a white knob and, and gold trim. <laughs> Thanks for the tip, but I cat. Okay, we're going to ink it up with Hiroshizuku Tsukiyo and do a writing sample. The writing was smooth and it was nice and juicy even for a medium nib. To me, the Pilot nibs are a little bit smoother than the Sailor ones which give you a very slight but pleasant feedback. Tsukiyo goes perfect with this nib and then with fast writing it kept up no problem at all. And then with reverse writing, it's just a little bit scratchy, but you know, I don't reverse write. And of course it's lighter and thinner. The pen posts nicely and it doesn't come off or jiggle around once you have it on. And I think it's because that inner cap goes all the way down. It just kind of seats very nicely onto the pen. Here it is unposted and then posted in my hand. I generally don't post pens, but one of the reasons I don't is I'm always afraid, especially if it has like a protruding metal cap band, that it might like scratch up your finish, but that inner cap really helps with that. Let's talk a little bit about marketing. I would say that at one time I was a pilot head. I have like a gajillion Kakunos, two Pilot Custom 74s, and I even own a Grants. Nobody knows what a Grants is. But then I moved to Japan and Sailor was putting out all these special editions and collaborations. And so from Sailor, you got pens like this. And Pilot gave me this. Sailor, colorful, cute pens. Oh, okay, Pilot, classic pen. Sailor, new pastel colors, no cap band. You get a nice, interesting nib. And Pilot, another classic. Recently, there was one Pilot collaboration with a stationery store called Pentonoto, and this is their Koseki Yuji Music pen. Um, this picture is from the glamour photographer Fudifan. I waited too long and can just kick myself for not being able to get the pen because there are just so few collaborations with Pilot. Now I know the Custom 74 has come out with some pretty, pretty colored demonstrators and the Pilot Falcon has like a purple and a red blue body, but there's nothing that's like sparkly or really interesting. 
if you kind of want to get crazy you need to go to the pilot metropolitan but then that's a steel nib so i spent my time here in japan chasing sailors and i kind of drifted away from pilot the downside for pilot about that is i got used to the sailor nib so when I went to the store to check out the pen, I had totally planned on not getting it because the pictures of it weren't that interesting. When I got there, I was totally floored that Pilot had made a sparkly pen. I almost had to get it because of the novelty of it. But the price was a bit of a sticking point, and even though this is supposed to be part of their lineup, in my heart of hearts, I was afraid that Pilot would quit making this pen, so I decided to get it. The Shiyun was the first out of the gate to really hike their prices up. It was considerably more expensive here, even in Japan, but even more so outside of Japan. I really like the Shiyun because of its concave cut and I'm interested in gemology and rocks and that comes directly from that. But the price was a real sticking point and made many people angry. The Loka, which is pictured here on the left, and the Kumpo both sold out fairly quickly because they weren't priced as expensive as the Shiyun. There are still Shiyuns to be had here in the retail stores. Perhaps Platinum was just testing the water and trying to regain some of the money that's made in the aftermarket for their pens. But who's to say that that was really a bad decision? If the Kumpo and Roca sold out so quickly and their aftermarket prices are so high, maybe that just means they didn't make enough of them or they didn't charge enough for them as far as the bottom line for the company. Next out of the price-busting gate was the Sailor Pro Gear Slims. They slapped a 21 karat gold nib in there instead of the 14 karat and then doubled the price. But I think the market's going to hold that because I get asked about this pen all the time. People are always asking me, when is it coming to the States? Can you sell me yours? So yeah, I think it's quite a popular pen. There are special edition collaboration Pro Gear Slims that are cheaper than this one. And then I think Pilot kind of went, yeah, let's put a shiny pen out there and charge the same price as those Pro Gear Slims. But the difference is, is the Sailor has a, like a little story that's associated with their pens. Ama Oto literally means the sound of rain. And this fresh pastel green and pink kind of remind you of spring rain. So the bottom line is, do I like the pen? And I could give you the straightforward answers like, if you like a size 5 Pilot nib, you might want to get it. Or if you like the weight and balance of, of a Custom Heritage 92, this is similar to it, but it also posts very nicely. I went to the store to look at the pen with kind of a negative attitude and then I saw like wow Pilot has a sparkly pen this is really cool and so I was kind of neutral about it but just wanted to check it out and now that I've been riding with it for about a week I fell back in love with Pilot. It's a wonderful smooth rider and these sparkles kind of shine more in the indoors many sparkly pens you kind of have to be out in this bright light and then you can catch the light and make it sparkle but when you're just sitting at your desk with the lights on and it's nighttime it sparkles it just looks really really nice i'm going to have to sell my custom heritage 92 to hang on to this pen i really hope that pilot continues down this path of making a little bit different pens like this but much like the Shion I was talking about, I don't really know how these things affect the bottom line of a company. And it may not be the best decision for them because I don't know what their market really is. But selfishly, I want them to do this. But what I really want them to do is... But I guess that's just wishful thinking. This week we're having the Madazen Pen Fair. 
they have great special edition inks there and a lot of beautiful pens to look at but most of the pens are way out of my price range I did a video on last year's Modizen show along with Pilot Headquarters and I'll link that in the upper right hand corner. But as I was leaving the show I had noticed there was this lady selling journals. She was right next to all the ink and had an assortment of A5 and A6 journals. She covers these journals with cloth from all over the world. This cloth is from New York. They all have a little bookmark and they're filled with light cream colored Kinmati paper. They are not sewn but hand bound and she uses PUR glue which I guess is a higher quality. You can crank the book open pretty hard to get it lit to lay flat and the paper is really smooth and fountain pen friendly. This is the lady and she was making some bookmarks while we were there and this is her company Teduko Zakaten. This is an A5 hardbound journal that she made and the cover material is made out of silk and it's from Thailand. So the paper is made in Japan and the silk is made in Thailand and then she binds it here in Japan. If you follow my Instagram and put a comment under the picture of the Pilot SE, I'll use a random comment picker next week to pick one lucky person to get this journal. Take care and see you next week.